Almost a decade ago, I had the privilege of attending a workshop from one of Apple's motion designers, and I ended up doing this triple shot as a result. That has been one of the shots that got the most exposure so far. So in this video, I will share with you the tips and tricks that I learned in that workshop to help you gain more exposure with your works and bring your websites to life. Let's go. Hello my friends, if you're new to this channel and you want to stay up to date with my latest videos covering advanced web design and freelance skills, make sure to subscribe and enable the notifications. Okay, let's get right to it. So there's three main fundamentals of animation in web design. Number one is meaning, number two is physics, and number three is choreography. Let's start with meaning. So because web design is all about capturing the user's attention, we should use animation to communicate the value of our client's business in a delightful way. Animations should help users understand and properly digest what's happening in the screen. Objects in real life don't appear and disappear out of the blue, right? So animations can help us bridge the gap between an active and inactive state, for example, or between one screen and the other, or elements that are transitioning in between states. So imagine your client's business as a person, right? That's the first thing that, that I want you to think about. How would it move? So let's say that we're designing a kid's website, right? We will probably have some fun, quirky animations to go along with the, the theme of the website, right? And that gives meaning to the website, that communicates better than if, let's say that, if it was like something slow paced and very elegant, right? On the other hand, if we're working on an elegant brand, right, it makes sense to use more delicate, soft, you know, fade in, fade out type of things, something that, that looks more delicate, right? So that's what I mean with meaning. Try to make sure that you're choosing the right animations based on the character of your client's business. Now, here's another example, right, of meaning. We can also give meaning based on the theme, right? And this also means that, for example, in this case, this website was for a production company, a video production company, right? And so what I did for the animation of the loading, right, was to use the, the, the 3 to one type of animation that you see on an old vintage movie, right? Three, two, one, right? So that was the loading animation that I used for the loading screen of this website. Why? Because it had meaning. It was tied to the theme of the website, right? So here's another example. Here you can see the transition between one place and the other. And you can see that oscilloscope. And that basically ties to the oscilloscope and this logo this pro this company is called oscilloscope and they have oscilloscope on their logo right so i i said okay between the transitions we can use an animation of an oscilloscope so how can you find ideas to give meaning to to your website animations let's jump in, into youtube and i can show you how i do it okay so here for example if you look at oscilloscope animation i found this video that that says what's an oscilloscope and you can see here that when he touches something that's the type of animation that an oscilloscope might do right one of the of animations that the, that it might do so i said okay um i just go into a, a video platform like youtube for example and research about the company that I'm working for and find movements or motion ideas to pair with my designs, okay? So, and that's like, for example, with those small animations, you can always think about connecting them to CTAs, transition between screens, loading screens, etc. So the other way that you can give meaning to a website is if on top of everything you can wow the user with some kind of delightful animation and then if you can do that the, then you will have created a memorable experience that the user will never forget so this is an you know an example of that let me also show you 
my website has an, an introduction with bridge the gap and there's like a you know like this fade in here and the line that draws and connects bridge with the gap right to basically have a visual metaphor of bridging the gap another thing that I that I did to create some kind of delightful animation in the website is to for example add some screenshots of my students and me when a user hovers on the apply to join the club right to just signify that that's a special CTA and bring some kind of delight to the to a simple you know animation that could just be you know the the change of color but I thought why not add some spark some kind of like delight there but the idea of this came from you know thinking about okay when they join the club they will be surrounded by like-minded designers and they're, they're gonna get mentorship from me okay let's show that visually and that's where the idea came from so that's why I'm saying give meaning to your animations and get into the theme of the website and you're gonna find a lot of ideas that you can use in your designs okay awesome the next one is physics so animation has its foundation in nature and real life so in order for our animations to feel natural they need to follow the physics of real world objects so let's say that for example we're animating a slider right well the best thing that we can do is just choose one direction for the movement and keep that direction for all of the elements so take a look at this example and see how every element in this slider is animating in the same direction from right to left right and that's because we're swiping from right to left to the next slide now in this case for example the animation is totally awesome but you can see that things are coming from various different places there's a lot of directions going on especially in the menu animation so you can see here that if we play it slow the background of the menu is coming from the top to the bottom but then the text is coming from the bottom to the top and then the line is starting from the left to the right so there's three directions going on here at the same time so that's just too many directions for the same animation you want to just keep it very simple and use mostly the same directions for elements animating at the same time okay that ties to the idea of like when you throw something for example right various elements they all move in the same direction even though they might move in a different angle or different speed depending on their mass but they will all move in the same direction next let's talk about mass right bigger elements animate slower and vice versa so let's analyze this animation first off let's see it right so here for example the CTA has a very very fast animation short now the images here have a very slow animation buttons as well are small and they they move fast right they transition fast but again the images have a very slow animation that's because the mass right the size of the elements is bigger and so we want to try to portray that in the animation as well so let me jump into my website again and show you another example of this so again let's look at the at this example right so my image is animating slower than the rest of the images because I want to accentuate the idea that that image is bigger and, and thus it has more mass and so it will feel more natural if it's gonna move slower than the rest okay so let's go back let's talk about easings so in this video you can see how in real life you know objects will decelerate or accelerate not in a linear way but with some deceleration and acceleration right so we want to use that in our designs to make sure that our animations feel natural okay so let's jump into principle again and now let's take a look at the easings here 
So I created a version of this animation or this prototype, but with linear easings so that you can see how they look. Okay, so first off the hover, right? Very dull. And then when you press, that's what happens, right? And when you click here, that's what happens. It's just too stiff, right? So the idea is that we want to add easings to it. So how do we do that? Well, basically what we do is here, you can see that it says linear and has an emoji, <laughs> right? The only reason why we would use linear animations or easings would be with some kind of digital type of animation, like for example, a Pac-Man, right? But other than that, I wouldn't use linear as easing. So what I normally use is ease in and ease out, right? And what you want to do is have this part of the curve be as st as steep as possible, right? That's going to create a lot of contrast between when it starts acce accelerating, it accelerates and then it decelerates slowly, okay? If you want to copy the formula of my easings, I always use the same easing, 0 0.9, 0, 0 0.1, 1, okay? Let's go back. Awesome. So now let's talk about choreography. So choreography is a coordinated sequence of motion that maintains users focus as the interface adapts. That's what ma Google material design says. So choreography helps us establish hierarchy in our animations. So the reason is that our eye follows movements. Imagine that you're in a room, right? And someone enters the room what you will probably do is move your eyes towards what moved, right? Our eye is drawn to movement. So we can use that as our advantage in the following way. First off, what doesn't move has the lowest hierarchy. Secondly, what animates first is secondary. And then third, what animates last is tertiary, okay? So let me show you some examples, right? Let's see this example here. So here, there's several things that are not animating, like for example, the nav anim items, right? The other thing that is not animating is this button here. It's almost not animating. It's fading out and fading in very, very quickly. And it happens super fast, right? Now, what ends the animation here is that typography on the on the back, right? And the reason is that we're using that to communicate, okay, that's the highest hierarchy because it's the biggest one, but at the same time, we want users to scroll, okay? And that's why something is coming from the bottom and communicating that, okay, now you can scroll and that's what we want users to do, okay? Here's another example. So you will see how the least important elements are just staying static right? See, for example, nav items stay static. And the things that are really changing are the big things, right? The more important things. Right? Here, it's very clear how, for example, animates very quickly, then that attitude typography at the, in the back animates super quickly. The buttons animate very quickly like this ones. But then what ends the movement or the transition are the big images because we want again to signify, okay, now we, we can scroll on in that direction, right? And there's more content coming from there, right? And it ends up being the last thing in the animation because it's the most important thing, right? Now the, the focus is on the images. Okay, let's jump to principle and let me show you what I mean with this. Here you will be able to see how I lay the keyframes actually in the program to be able to achieve this result. So basically everything is mostly animating at the same time on 0 0.3 seconds, right? But some elements are animating in more, like for example, you know, this big image is animating first and this second image is animating last. So it's it ends at 1.3 and this one ends at 1 
second. This is a very different concept from product design where we're animating things very snappy all the time because we want users to be able to focus on the the, the actions that they're you know taking on the interface, right? But in this case, we we can have a little bit more playground to just accentuate the transitions and make sure that it's a very engaging and immersive experience, okay? Anticipation is a concept that comes from Disney, Disney animations, and the idea is that we want to anticipate what's going to happen if the user interacts with our interface or if they have already interacted with our interface. So here, for example, the user is hovering and things are growing to signify that, that that's going to be the main focus if they click on that, right? So that's why we want, we're scaling up things when the user hovers on the plus button, right? So this is another example where when users click on the button, now there's something that anticipates what's going to happen to guide the user's attention. So for example, the image, you can see that it's scaling up once the user clicks and then scaling down. So that's anticipating that the image is going to scale down. Now we have the user's attention on the image and now it's easier for the user to follow the movement. Okay. And now don't be this meme, right? Don't animate all the things. Make sure that you choose the important elements and animate those. Or you can also animate details that add character like this example that I'm going to show you. So if you want to just add little details on the animations, you can do so like this stroke there, or for example, here you can see this, or this other stroke, or the little drawings there, right, that are drawing <laughs> as we scroll, right? So you can also do that if you want. Usually nav elements and other smaller details don't need animation, okay? So here's again the example of Sonoma and how, for example, you can see that the nav is static while other things are moving. Amazing, my friends. So now you know the fundamentals of motion design for web, right? And so now you're ready to start playing with those choreographies and putting everything that you learned in this video into practice. If you learned something, give this video a like. It helps a lot. And remember to subscribe and enable notifications. If you want to join thousands of students learning five secrets to design beautiful websites with the Golden Canon Grid, then check out my free Golden Canon Grid course for web designers. I'll leave the link in the description. And if you're ready to pick your web design skills and learn how to monetize them so that you can have more freedom to do the things that you love, then click the link below to apply to my signature program, the Web Design Masterclass. I will schedule a call with you if you're a fit and we can then chat and decide if the program is the right fit for you. And hey, if you don't get to the results you saw in this video on your first try, don't get discouraged. I've been designing websites for 12 or more years, so give yourself some grace and keep practicing. You got this, my friend. Let's bridge the gap one pixel at a time. See you in the next one.